And welcome back for another clarinet tutorial from Nottingham Music Excellence. So I've just played Groove on a Plate by Mike Mower. Now I think this is a fantastic opportunity actually in this book to play something really different from the other pieces and it's quite technically challenging too. So stay tuned for the tutorial and I'm going to show you how to make it sound really awesome. Here we go. So I think the biggest challenge with this piece is to make it sound as stylistically correct as you can. And just be careful that you don't fall into the trap of making it sound too classical. So that's going to be the main focus of this tutorial, I think. So first of all, let's have a look at the metronome mark that it says. So it says upswing crotchet equals 170. Now, if you've tried to play it at 170, it is rather quick, isn't it? It is quite quick, but they have suggested below uh, a tempo of 152 might be a bit more appropriate for grade 6 which i think is um which i think is quite kind and probably about right actually so let's have a look at this now i think the main thing you've got to avoid is where's my metronome now let's say i pick let's say i pick that speed of 152 So I think first of all, it, it's quite hard to play in crotchets anyway and make it sound stylistically correct. So I think what you've got to do, you've got to really avoid this kind of... Um... It doesn't sound very jazzy, does it? It sounds really naff. <laughs> so, so here's my top tips for this piece. So I would kind of ignore the crotchet speed and let's try and turn it into a minimum tempo so let's say how about something around maybe like 76 or 80 let's try 76 so if I now play it at this speed it just gives me a little bit more freedom within the beat But now what I'm going to do, a, a good friend of mine suggested that if you if you play with the metronome off the beat instead of on, you'll feel the swing in the right place a bit more naturally and it will sound a little bit more jazzy. So let's try that. So so I'm going to stick with I'm going to stick with 76 for the moment and I'm now going to place I'm going to play with the beats off the beat and just listen to listen to what it, the effect is. OK. So one, two, two, three. So already we're 
already you can hear already you can hear that that's really transformed the piece it just sounds so much better and it just it helps you to feel the swing in the right place so that's my top tip for this piece is don't play it too classically and try and avoid at all costs sort of dum da dum da dum da dum 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 i think naturally if you play it in crotchets it will automatically sound a bit too you know it just won't sound quite right and there's all kinds of moments in here i think where you can just make it sound so jazzy and so cool so what am i thinking of so i'm thinking maybe bar 15 16 So notice there in slow motion in play. And maybe the next bit, I love these triplet bits that you've got. Really use that, I think, forte accented note. Really go for that, I think. It sounds, sounds great, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to chat about the, just going over the page here. I think this is one of the bits where you can perhaps get in a bit of a muddle with the sharps and the naturals and the flats or whatever. Um, so we've got bar 33, yep, yeah, 33 that is. <laughs> So be careful through that section. It's quite easy to just misread the sharps and not quite be able to read it quick enough. And leading into 44 and 45, I think this is another section where you have to be really careful. They've given you the phrasing on the page here, the jazz phrasing sort of written out for you. Just be careful that this doesn't sound too classical and contrived, you know, so... Obviously up to speed, but um, just use that phrasing to really, really help them. Nice little kind of bit there, isn't it? Got a pause note there, so use all your air up, finish off, and then take a big breath to get into that next section again. Could exaggerate the dynamics there as well, couldn't you? So it comes in MP. But then you get that surprise rhythm on the forte there. And then back to MP again. So I think just be careful when you're learning it and you're having fun with it, just be careful it doesn't turn into a kind of a blastathon, you know, and you just kind of nail it from the first note to the last, you know, put some variety in there, just um, make it sound really cool. Um, this bit at, this bit at 37, 38, another bit that I think you can make sound really jazzy. Um, kind of play around with that a little bit, couldn't you? Um, Kind of that's material that we've played before. Oh, and this next bit, I like this actually. Um, and the closing couple of lines, just watch out here after you've done the... And then just be careful with your flats here. This is another bit that's quite tricky to play off the beat, but it is, it is doable. And then the last line, really go for this. I think this just sounds fantastic. So I think this is gonna be a super piece to play. I think this just contrasts the other piece so much. Um, I think this is my favorite piece of the book just because another one that I didn't know actually, and 
and I thought when I my first impressions of it were I thought crikey this is a, a tricky piece but actually when you get to know it it's not that bad I think it's about right for the standard and you can just have so much fun with it you know it's one of those pieces that you can't put down you just keep going back to like a four bars here and there and and just keep having some fun with it so I think this is a really good piece and and probably you know probably the best one in the book so best of luck if you're playing this for grade six just take your time learning the notes first just perhaps if you're going to do some slow practicing crotchets um, but make sure just try that trick with playing it in minims and also with the minims off the beat because it, it really does help and you'll be um, you'll be playing it like a jazzer in no time at all so I hope you found that useful. Do click on that like button if you enjoyed the video and of course maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. But that's it for that for this one. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.